Hello, this is the Provoke Prawn, and this is the WD Black SN750. Here you can see the glorious SN750 with heatsink installed. I have two of them installed on the MSI Meg Creation X299 motherboard, which I'll be doing a video on shortly if you're interested. I wanted to show you how to install these drives, talk about why you should install them because they're awesome and problems I came across when installing on this motherboard. If you're thinking about buying this motherboard, I'll be doing another video to show you in a bit more depth and talk about the issues I've had. Now, a highlight to this motherboard is the fact that it has three slots for NVMe drives on it. And if you don't know what to do with that, I have done a video previously on how to install them and then how to install them if you don't have spare slots on your motherboard you can use a PCIe adapter, which is really cool. So this is the SN750, this is what it looks like. It's a really cool looking little drive. Now the reason to purchase an NVMe drive, if you don't know, is the insane read-write speeds. A standard SSD gets around 500 megabytes per second. Uh, NVMe drive like this can get up to 3,500. They say, Western Digital claim, that this can get up to 3,470 megabytes per second. It also has the EWK water block heatsink on it. It's designed by those guys and it is a beast. It looks fantastic. I'm sure you agree. The first problem I hit though is the heatsink shields that come on the motherboard now won't fit because these drives are a bit chunkier than your standard NVMe drive, which you'll see later on when I show you how else to install NVMe drives. Another highlight to this motherboard is that it comes with a PCIe capable adapter which allows you to install four extra drives. That's right, if you buy this motherboard you can have seven NVMe drives in your system which is insane. I'll show you the installation process from another angle. You can see you've got one already installed. They basically plug into the NVMe M2 slot on your motherboard and then you just need to screw them down with the correct screw. They're really easy to do and they're well worth having. There are arguments as to why you should use them. I would say I enjoy having Windows on these drives because it boots really quickly. It also means programs that I use are load much faster and it's much more capable. You can also, if you have multiple drives, have room for games so you can load games a lot more quickly and it is insane the difference these make. So this is the M2 expander drive that I was talking about. It plugs into straight into your motherboard into the PCIe slot and it can hold up to four drives which is nuts. It also has a built-in cooling system and it requires a little bit of power from your power supply unit. As you can see you have a six pin adapter there which is relatively easy to install, especially if you're in the process of just setting up. So this is a fresh build I've been doing, which I'm uploading some more videos on soon. And that's the reason why my channel's been a bit quiet lately. And here you can see these are standard NVMe drives. So the uh, Samsung Evo 970 is the one I've done a video on before, and the Intel Optane drive. Those both fit nicely in here. I did test the WD Black with the heatsink in here as well that would not fit. So it won't fit in here because of the heat shielding, again, the dispersal of the heat there. <laughs> so it won't fit on the motherboard without, with the shield on it and it won't fit in here either. So if you're considering buying and you want to keep those shields in place and keep the look and feel of your motherboard, then you might want to opt for the WD Black SN750 without the heat sinks because that will fit. As you can see there, at the bottom of this M2 expander, I've actually put another one. So I have two with heat sinks and two without. And I must admit, I do prefer the look and feel of the ones with the heat sinks. They look really swish. How much difference the block makes to the actual performance of the drives, I have not tested, so I cannot say. But on looks alone, it must give you at least another five <laughs> megabytes per second speed enhancement. I don't know. It just looks fantastic, and that's the reason on its own to purchase it, especially if you have a tempered glass case where you can see into the machine and get a view of your motherboard and see them in all their glory. Now here you can see the M2 adapter installed. Another thing I was doing with this build is installing the graphics card vertically with an adapter from Corsair. 
Unfortunately, it isn't possible because the M2 expander is quite wide, so that is another thing to bear in mind. As I said, I'll be doing a video on the motherboard and the case and everything else, so please be sure to check my channel if you're interested in that. But here you can see, without the expander, what that vertical GPU mount looks like and what the WD Black looks like installed in the background. I think it looks pretty awesome installed like that. That heatsink looks really brilliant. And a close-up view of the finished product, although not entirely finished because the cables still need tidying and I'm having some problems with the LED light strips. Hope you've enjoyed this video. This has been the Provoke Prawn. Please like, subscribe and come back for more in the future. Thanks for watching.